flood zone determination business by many standards is a relatively new industry formed in the 1980s as a result of the mandatory purchase legislation that became effective in 1974. And lenders were designed in that legislation to be key to compliance to those mandatory purchase guidelines. And from that, the flood zone determination industry grew up to provide the services needed um, for the lenders to be able to comply with those requirements. And then following the 1993 floods, the passage of the 1994 law was very significant in the industry and significant to lenders. It brought many new requirements, but one was the development of the standard flood hazard determination form, which provided a vehicle that was uniform for recording determination results for lenders, which also assisted in the regulators when they came in to audit them to re to review compliance requirements, but it also required that third parties who place flood data, such as flood zone determination companies, on that form guarantee the data on the form. And although the majority of flood zone determination companies were guar already guaranteeing their work, the requirement for guaranteed determinations was significant for the industry. Lenders could no longer rely upon entities such as perhaps surveyors, appraisers, community officials, and others for determinations, as most of these entities did not provide that information on the standard flood hazard determination form and did not provide a financial warranty uh, sufficient to satisfy the guarantee that was being required by the lenders and the banks. And the world has really changed. Today, the lending industry is heavily regulated now more than ever since Dodd-Frank and the creation of the Consumer Financial Protection Board. And since the financial collapse, the industry is facing greater oversight and scrutiny as regulators are requiring more and more documentation relative to processes and data and are, have increased their look at the oversight of vendors providing data to lending institutions. Flood determination companies now face ever-increasing oversight as well, and the demands related to performance, information security, and compliance all are subject to regular audits from lenders and compliance teams coming in and auditing on-site uh, flood determination company processes. And the industry also developed, besides determining whether properties are in or out, a full suite of products to assist lenders in maintaining their loan portfolios to be flood compliant. And in the early days of the flood, um, the flood zone companies maintained about 100,000 paper maps, firms, flood hazard boundaries, maps. Lomax were coming in by paper. Um, or via CDs every few weeks. Fax machines rolled in with hundreds and hundreds of orders that were just rolling off the machines to be completed by the industry. And I can remember a time working in the industry when 20% automation rate was something that was just fabulous. And, uh, and today our member surveys show that that automated rate for new orders is running at a median rate of about 88%. Um, and that information comes from member surveys. Early on, companies began to adopt technology by dig digitizing the inventory of paper firms, building geospatial systems, developing interfaces to and from loan origination and mortgage servicing systems um, to, for orders to come in and to return those results to those firms. Uh, business functions were automated, supporting determinations to facilitate growth improve response times for customers, and enhance the da data that was available to research um, researchers. And today the industry has matured. With the advancement of GIS technology and the prevalence of, uh, of aerial and satellite imagery drove the continued innovation in the industry. Digital layers for parcel data, building footprint data, other data supporting uh, data layers supporting that, including flood, all geo-referenced, all assisted companies in development of highly accurate means to automatically complete and return flood determinations within seconds to the lenders, 
and insurance clients. Robust geospatial workstations with sophisticated work tools provided smart technology and access to digital layers and uh, that aided also the technicians completing manual determination. The rapid growth of the flood determination services led to flood determination companies becoming the largest collective users of the FEMA flood maps, producing approximately 90% of the determinations produced nationwide. Surveys of our NFDA membership reflected a range of 33 million new determinations completed in 2006 when there was a um, really robust refinance market taking place to roughly 26 million new orders processed for lenders and insurance in 2017. And of noted interest in a change was that 8 million of those orders were for write your own companies and their vendors last year. And it's not widely known that many flood determination companies have also built specialized processes to manage requests for grandfather zones, to identify new zones and prior zones for properties uh, newly mapped into the special flood hazard area, data for, for marketing scans um, for insurance agents, and other services really customized for write your owns and their vendors. However, all those numbers and those moons do not reflect the number of life alone determinations that were revised due to mapping and mapping updates. In 2017, 169 million transactions were being tracked for the life of loan product for lenders, and more than 5 million of those transactions have been impacted by map revisions. And as the industry matured conversations pertaining to legislative and mapping related topics took place and the benefits of that collaboration became apparent for the flood determination companies and their clients in the flood industry. And the byproduct of that action was the formation of the National Flood Determination Association in 1991. And that majority of that membership at that time was comprised of flood determination companies. And those factors informed NF NFDAs and the association's initiatives. And at that time, we formed a data and mapping committee. And that committee met biannually with FEMA and their contractors to discuss issues and strategies to affect positive change in the development, maintenance, and distribution of maps. The committee identified and quantified issues surrounding mapping, map maintenance, product delivery, um, QAQC, and the on-time delivery of revalidation letters and LOMAX into the flood determination industry. We worked together to provide solutions and, and they were identified and implemented. We became a central point for FEMA to contact for association communications out to the membership on certain important issues. And we engaged with FEMA leadership and support staff and formed a very strong working relationship. Others, other initiatives were engaging with Congress on the importance of maintaining the flood maps, mapping unmapped stream miles, and the importance of funding for mapping. We created work groups across flood stakeholders, and uh, one of those was a, a work group that um, managed the lender requirement to resolve flood zone discrepancies, and that had an impact um, industry-wide. We developed key relationships with the Mortgage Banking Association, the American Bankers Association, Write Your Owns, the ASFPM, NASMA, and we also educated the flood industry by explaining the challenges surrounding flood data and the use of flood maps and the implications for each stakeholder um, group through NFDA participation on panels at the industry conferences, webinars, and presentations and um, through on-site presentations. Importantly, NFDA understood the depth of the impact for flood stakeholders and that NFDA was functioning as a hub across these stakeholders. And these facts continued to the expansion of NFDA membership with new industry partners becoming NFDA members. The, N the NFDA leadership acknowledging the metamorphosis of the association developed a two-year transformation plan to its members, membership base and to serve and partner with additional flood stakeholders. 
broadening its goals, missions, priorities, revising bylaws, establishing a new brand identity and creating a more appropriate name, the National Flood Association was announced in 2018. The current board of directors is comprised of representatives from not only flood determination companies, but from lenders, engineering firms, claims management firms, write your own companies, and private insurers writing flood. NFA is beginning a new, or NFA, National Flood Association, is beginning a new chapter and finding new opportunities. We are already engaging with um, claims firms, private markets, insurers, and other stakeholders are exploring meaningful ways to provide data to the flood industry. A claim summit was held at NFA's annual conference and a claims committee was established and key initiatives to support that sector were identified and prioritized. A lender workshop was also held at that annual conference and three working groups have been, have been formed out of that and are already working on solutions to the industry and challenges um, that were identified during that workshop. We've expanded the data and mapping committee to include the, in the interests of other um, flood stakeholders besides flood determination companies. And our legislative committee has the same um, broader stakeholder affiliation as we work to have a more comprehensive approach to flood policy. NFDA is building on the experience and successes of, or NFA is I'm still having trouble getting all those acronyms through. <laughs> the National Flood Association is building on the experience and successes of the Flood Determination Association while navigating some new and uncharted territory. The evolution is an exciting journey for our long term and our new members, and we look forward to new opportunities that it presents. Stay tuned. Thank you.